Hi you guys, I'm going to do some Punnett squares with you. So let's go through some of these. We'll start out with a very simple monohybrid cross. So in this example, Tanya is a carrier of the gene for cystic fibrosis. And I'm telling you that this is a homozygous recessive disease. In a mating with a male with cystic fibrosis, what are the chances that their offspring will have the disease? So the very first thing that you would have to do here is write out the key for yourself that has um, the gene. So let's use a letter and we can use F for cystic fibrosis and we would use if this individual, the genotype has big F, big F, then um, they could be, let's do all possibilities first and then we'll figure out what's what. Could be big F, little f or it could be little f, little f. And what this means is that they inherited from their parent, right, uh, from a mom and from a dad, maybe the big F, maybe the little f, which is the trait for cystic fibrosis. So it's telling us here that it is a homozygous recessive disease. So the person with the disease is this one. The one that has homozygous, same, homosame, recessive, the little f, little f. So this person is fine, right? This person is fine, and this person has the disease, okay? So what we want to do then is do the box for the Punnett square, and see what are the possibilities of the offspring having the disease. So let's go back. Tanya's a carrier. So it's telling me that if she's a carrier for the gene for cystic fibrosis, she can't be this one. She's still fine, but she does have that little F inserted there. So she has one big F and she has one little F that he, she inherited from her parents. There's a mating here with a male with cystic fibrosis. So this is a little f and a little f because it's an individual's disease. In reality, some people don't survive till their reproductive age. So this might be a, a difficult problem here. Um, so now when Tanya uh, passes this gene on, because of meiosis, she might pass this one on or it might pass that one on, you don't know. So we have to figure out every possible combination given that we don't know which is the one she's passing on. So every possible combination for dad, every possible combination for mom. So here we write it out. We would have big F, little f is one of the possibilities for their children to inherit. This one would be little f, little f, because she passes on that one and dad passes on the little one. She passes on the big F and dad passes on the little one. Or she passes on the little one and so does dad. So now we go back and read the problem again. What are the chances that their offspring will have the disease? So the chances that they have the disease are these here. So the answer is 50%. Okay, so pretty straightforward when we have two possibilities for male here, two for female, and we work out all the possible combinations. So that's a simple monohybrid cross. Let's go to a different one, and all these are going to be in your book, so I want you to look at them all in your book. This would be a case slightly different of incomplete dominance, which means that you don't either inherit it or not. It's not a yes or no, because you could have an in-between. So look at this example where you're breeding a red flower with a white flower, and the offspring, instead of getting a red or a white, you get something that's in-between. So that's an incomplete dominance. It's easier to write it out like they did with like a little R, R, you know, little R1, R1 and you make the other extreme R2, R2. And then anything that's in between is going to be the middle color. This happens in fish, sometimes a dark fish, a light fish, and then the breeding will give speckled, for example. So in this breeding, where you have the R1, we're going to do it here. 
Oh, what was that? I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, let's get the pen back. Let's get the eraser. I'm going to erase that, get the pen back, and do an R1, R1, or a Punnett square, a little crooked. And we're going to mate it with the R2, R2. And when you cross these, you're going to have R1, R2, R1, R2, R1, R2, and R1, R2. So it turns out that from this combination of a total red and a total white, all of the offspring instead would be pink. So that's an example of incomplete dominance. So easy to write it out with these extremes, make them all ones. The other extreme is all two, and then any combination of that is going to be the, the middle, the, you know, the speckled one or the pink in this case. Okay, another example is of co-dominance. This best example is portrayed in the blood groups, where you could be type A, type B, uh, type O, or both, type A and B. And so this is co-dominance when the one doesn't dominate over the other. You could actually be both. So if you had one parent, for example, be type A, and A and nothing else, all they have is one of the genotype, only one of those, because that's how it is in the blood groups. You, you inherit one and maybe nothing on the other location. And the dad here is going to be B and nothing on the other location. Then we do this cross. This is what you get. This individual would inherit A from mom and B from dad, and they would be the AB group. This individual would inherit B from dad and nothing else. So they would be B. This individual would inherit A from mom and nothing from dad, so they would be A. And this individual would be nothing and nothing, which would make them O, type O. So this is the example here, really, that I wanted to show you of the co-dominance, right? It's not either B or A, but it could actually be both. Sex-linked problems. In sex-linked problems there, it's usually carried on the X chromosome only. So you have to remember that. X chromosome only. And we're going to set up the Punnett square in a different way. This time we're going to set it up in a way that we write the X here and, and the X for mom. And we're going to write an X for dad and a Y for dad because we know that it's not carried on the Y chromosome, only on the X. So let's read it. A boy has a father who is colorblind and a mother who is a carrier for the disease. What is the probability of having a colorblind girl? So let's take this out. I didn't mean that, a boy. So let's just have a child. What, what happens when you have a father who's colorblind a mother who's a carrier, what's the probability of having a colorblind girl? So this cross is going gonna, is gonna to generate a girl, and this cross is going to generate a girl, XX, and this cross is going to generate a boy, and this cross is going to generate a boy. Now we're going to put our letters in. So the father is colorblind. So we're going to do, if you have big B, little b for the mom, she's a carrier. If she's big B, big B, she has nothing. If she's little b, little b, she's colorblind. For the dad, because it's only on the X, so this is mom. For dad, he would be either, if he has big B, he is normal. If he has little b, he's colorblind. And that's all the possibilities. So father who's colorblind here. So we're going to put the little b on his x. And the mother who's a carrier. So she's going to have a big b and a little b. 
and they're asking us, what's the probability of having a colorblind girl? So I'm going to do just these because these are the girls. So I would inherit big B and little and little and little because I got it from both. So what is the possibility of having a colorblind girl? And that is 50%. This is a, a short lecture, so I'm going to stop it here, and I'll do some more examples later.